human history, people come together to celebrate in joyous times, and they come together in sad times to share their grief with one another. It's probably as old as human community. This is a time of sadness. We've lost a beloved Irv Kaufman. And so we gather to share our grief with one another, turning to each other for comfort and solace, and turning as well to God, who is with us also. And there are no words more oft repeated and sung at this kind of occasion than King David's 23rd Psalm. Please join me in reciting the words in English. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. <clears throat> Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The poem that we read at our memorial services reminds us that it's not simply that the people that we love will not be forgotten. It is more that we will remember them because we want to remember them. And the occasions in our lives, day to day, are the prompts for our memories. And so we say to Irv, in the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember you. In the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, we will remember you. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember you. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember you. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember you. When we are weary and so much in need of your strength, Irv, we will remember you. When we have joys, when we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember you. For so long as we live, so long as we live, Irv, you too live because you are a part of us always, especially in those beautiful moments when we remember you and we remember your love for us. Dear God, we ask that you be with this family during this difficult time. Help them to draw close to one another so that they can continue to give each other the love and strength that they will need in the days and weeks ahead. We know that Irv's memory will always live among them. In time, we pray, allaying their grief, and we are confident that Irv's spirit will live on as a precious memory and a wonderful, beautiful influence in the hearts of all his loved ones. And to this we say, Amen. I've now been in Houston for 45 years. And Irvin Janice and their family have been one of the constants in my life. I've been at all the major events in their lives over the years, some happy, some sad. Took the kids to religious school for carpool when I lived nearby. And somewhere out there, I don't see her at the moment, I know my wife Linda's here because we are close and we feel personally attached, not just professionally. Most of you know a bit about Irv's background. Born in a small town in Henrietta, Oklahoma, graduated high school there, went to OU. In high school, he had been a big sports, uh, sports star, captain of the football team, played basketball, ran track. And at one point, there, were even, there was even interest in his performance from the pros. When he met Jenis, that was it. They dated exclusively immediately. And if I may quote her, he asked me to marry him at a Texas OU game. <laughs> he was drunk as a skunk. <laughs> He must have been sober enough to know what he was doing, though, because it's lasted over 50 years. So I think he knew what he was doing anyhow. You all know that he graduated. They came back to Houston, and he worked at, in advertising at the Chronicle. It went Gardens, a big bonus, and eventually at Gulf States Advertising and became a partner in Sagnowitz & Company. 
One of the things I think we all know about Irv is how artistic he was. I remember him creating the sets for the old sisterhood shows that we used to do. I specifically remember in 1973 when we had something called Israel Expo and we literally turned Feld Hall into the old city of Jerusalem with streets and shops and all kinds of things. And Irv was one of the key people in both the design and execution of that. And one of his favorite artistic hobbies was to sit in services and take the Shabbat and Yontif program and turn them into paper dolls. <laughs> I don't think he knew what the sermon was about, what difference does it make? <laughs> but he would turn them into paper dolls and give them to the kids. How herb is that? I think all of us also know that Julie and Paul and Peggy were his heart along with Jen's. He coached ball. He became a chief Indian guide for the girls. I think it's right to say that family and home were always, always the center of Irv's life. Not just the family, but the home too. If you go there and you look at all the amazing greenery, the plants surrounding the house, Irv took care of them. He, he saw to it with his green thumb. I know that Ali and Aiden, he didn't get to see you very often because you lived in Dallas. But the two of you and your mom were always in his heart and always a part of him. And while he didn't get to see you much, he sure did talk about you an awful lot. And I hope that the memories that you have, all of you, give you strength over the years. And for Katie and Emma and Sophie, of course, he really was a mainstay. He was the main man, you might say, because he was the constant strong male in their lives throughout their life. And of course, as a grandfather, he taught them the most important things in life, how to make spitballs, and how to give a wet willy. <laughs> he was, Irv could be an iconoclast of sort. He was sort of Peck's boy, bad boy from time to time with that really dry, dry wit with his often insightful and biting humor. As I said though, the heart of his life was his home and family. And I wanna read something to you written by Genesis' brother. I'm going to quote the whole thing. There are two important things about Irv that at least to me need to be remembered. First, he was a beautiful young man, tall, slim, athletic, and graceful. He had wonderful eyes and could smile like a camel. That memory faded in part because of the second thing that needs to be remembered. As a boy, Irv made a vow. I don't know if it was conscious, David wrote, but I have no doubt he made it. He vowed never to leave his family. He vowed always to be there for them and to take care of them. And he was true to that vow for more than five decades. It robbed him of his physical beauty, but revealed a kind of courage and love that is beyond what most of us are capable of. We will remember him as someone who took care of us, who loved us, and did his best to do those things until he took his last breath. I think everyone in this room knows that so much of Irv's life, even from a young man, he was faced with all kinds of medical issues back surgeries, bypass surgery, COPD. So many people would have given up long ago, but not Irv. What an amazing strength of will and attitude. His prime motive, 
as David said, was to be there for his family. Not just present in their life, but active and supportive. But Janice and the family also are aware that as good a care of him as they took, there were outside forces as well to his health. Janice, he never gave up, and you never gave up. You said to me yesterday, no regrets, and that is absolutely true. You should have none. It is hard to imagine how much energy you and the girls have put into his health and well-being over the years. I know that you did it out of love and would not change a thing. But the two of you were also blessed with this amazing cadre of friends. I don't need to name you. You know who you are, who have been there through it all with the two of them. They gave both you and Irv love, <coughs> strength, and time. Jenna said to me yesterday, we couldn't have done it without them. The them is those of you who know who you are. And a special bond was created between Irv and Melissa, his caregiver. I said this morning, and I will say again to Melissa, while she was paid to do what she did, her motivation, your motivation, she's sitting right here, was not the money. It was the love. Only that can create the bond and allow you to give the kind of love and care that you did. Without you, Irv would not have made it this far, and you know that. And you know as well how grateful his family is to you for what you did. If Irv could be here, even though he was sometimes a man of few words, he would be thanking you profusely, as I know he did every day. Toward the end, Janice and the kids gathered together and began to give Irv permission to let go. And yet he continued to hold on. That oath that you mentioned, he just couldn't let go. Not so much for himself, I truly believe, but for them. Janice, you said something to me after Irv died. And I have a feeling this is what finally allowed him to let go. You said he can know, he can now go play golf with Paul. I'm sure that the fairways and greens are perfect where they are that they're driving the hell out of the ball, 300 plus yards, avoiding every sand trap, getting on the greens in two, and making birdies regularly. So for all of us, goodbye, Irv. You've done good, and we miss you. But God knows you leave behind such wonderful memories in our minds and such amazing love in our hearts. And they will be there as part of our lives as long as we live. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your life with us. And to this we say, Amen. Oh God, you give us loved ones. You make them the strength of our life, the light of our eyes. And when they depart, they leave us bereft on a lonely way. And yet we see life as through windows that open onto eternity. We see that love endures and the soul endures. For they are gifts, O oh God, from you who endures forever. 
We know our years are more than grass that withers and flowers that fade. They weave a timeless pattern in a world that is the dwelling place of God's glory and of our love for one another. Would you please rise? Passionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Irv Kaufman, who enters now into eternity. God of mercy, may he find refuge beneath the shadow of your wings, and may his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. O God, you are his inheritance. May he rest in peace as we commit her from the precious, ongoing, loving keeping of his family and friends. Now, O oh God, into your eternal keeping as we repeat our memorial words of Kaddish. Yid Gadal, the Yid Kadash, Shemei Rabbah, the Olma, the Brahi Rute, the Amlich Malchute, the Chaye Chon, the Yome Chon, the Bachaye, the Cholbe Israel, the Galau, the Zman, the Kari, the Imru, Amen. Yehesh me Rabba me Barach le Olam lo Meil Maya. Yid Barach be Yish Tabach be Yid Paar be Yid Roman be Yid Nasei be Yid Hadar be Yid Dale be Yid Halal Shemei de Kudusha Berichu la Ela min Kol Berchata v'Shirata Tush Berchata v'Nechemata Dami Ram be Olma be Meromain. 
Yehi Shlomo Rimin Shemaya, Vachayim Aleinu Vial Kol Yisrael Bimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bimromav, Uya Se Shalom, Aleinu Vial Kol Yisrael Bimru Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn, comforting all who are bereaved, as we say together. Would you be seated, please? Irv loved the prayer, O Se Shalom, the last line of Kaddish. He worked so hard, he fought so hard, he is now at peace. Let's do it together. O Se Shalom Bim Rama. Ask you all now to remain at your seats for just a moment. The family is going to precede you into the Ashman multi-purpose room where they would love to have the opportunity sp to speak with and greet you and give you a chance to condole with them. So if you were to remain at your seats for just a moment until the family has left, then we'll join them in the multi-purpose room. Ruchim atem voachem, ruchim atem b'tzedchem. Blessed were you as you came to give comfort to this family in their time of sorrow. I know they join me in praying that when you depart, you will depart in health and safety and blessing as well. Amen. Thank you very much for coming.